You're listening to the Deidre Regal Hope and Healing Radio Show, where your voice matters. We're glad you're here and believe you will be too. And now, Deidre Regal with today's guest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part four of the series, Masculine and Feminine, Closing the Great Divide. Today's guest is Kimmy Ward. She is California-based, and I'd like to take a moment and tell you just a little bit about this fabulous woman before we actually get talking with her. So Kimmy Ward is a teacher, a lover, healer, nature junkie, and facilitator of fun and adventure. She is deeply committed to furthering the important conversation of balancing masculine and feminine energies on the planet and normalizing transformation. She is the owner of Big Mission Studios, where she utilizes photography and videography to create healing and transformational experiences for people. Her life's journey has taken her down many interesting paths, and her current path has led her to this amazing podcast, for which I am very grateful, by the way. She eats monsters in her sleep and is a self-professed rabble-rouser. Now, before we get talking with our self-professed rabble-rouser today, let me just give you her website information. I'm sure you'll enjoy going to that. It is Big Mission Studios. That's all one word, bigmissionstudios.com. And you'll find that she does headshot and lifestyle photography, videography, and I think you're really going to enjoy perusing her website. And I know that I'm going to enjoy talking with Kimmy Ward. So all that said about you, Kimmy Ward, welcome today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. It's just so delightful to have you here. So I want to get right to these questions that, that I'd like to ask you today. First question, Kimmy, in your opinion, is it still a man's world? That is a lovely question, and to that I'm going to ask you a little question, mostly because um, I would like you to ask that question in a slightly different way if you can, so that way I can okay. tweak my mm-hmm. answer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, so I think what I'm, what I'm wondering from you is, when you say, is it still a man's world, what, what does that mean to you, the set of curiosity? That's, that's a great question, and I really appreciate you asking me that. The generation that I am, which is part of the baby boomer generation, grew up with the attitude that it was a man's world. Men ran things. Men were responsible for making sure governments went forward. Women were not in power positions. Women basically stayed home and took care of the house and were, quote, unquote, housewives. And now we have a world that feels, I think, very different, but that's just my perception. So I've been asking every guest, first question, do you perceive it as a man's world? I guess that would be the best question I'd ask you, Kimmy. Do you perceive this as a man's world? So to answer your question, then, um, to an extent, yes, I do. And when I say man's world, for me more what I'm speaking of is that we have essentially given more praise and more accolades um, to the masculine, not necessarily just the man, but to the masculine energy. And so that, that energy is the energy of doing and, you know, focus and striving and achieving. There's not a lot of rest and relaxation that comes with the masculine energy. And even a lot of women these days have been experiencing a lot of masculine energy within themselves. We're very much striving to be at the top in our corporate environments and in our worlds, and we're all about, you know, influencing others and all these outer achievements and this attention on external physical reality and, like, taking the action to get there. And that's a very inner masculine trait. And I feel like that has really been... Um, at the forefront of what we view as important um, for probably the last century. And I do believe that it's shifting, thankfully, because I, you know, we really can see that it is taking a toxic toll on our health, um, on our society, just on our spirit in general. It's just, it's very tiring to be in that masculine energy all the time. Um, So to me, it has nothing to do with man or woman as we exist um, in a physical form. It's more about that energy. 
So if we're coming at it from that point, yes, we are still so very much in a masculine world, without a doubt. Um, what a great, fascinating answer, Kimmy. I myself, as I've said to several of my guests, carry a lot of masculine trait energy, the going and doing. But at some point, I need to pull back and be in the softer, receiving feminine energies. And yet, I agree with you, we still have this push to, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. And it is, it is very exhausting for all of us. And I'm not sure what drives us to be in that <laughs> constant to-do energy, whether it's fear pushing us at our back or... Uh, and or the sense of wishing to accomplish, uh, but I really feel uh, myself uh, in just looking at the world and often sometimes my, my own life and myself, that there can be an out of balanceness that we feel is pushed to be in the, the doing energy. So I really appreciate your, your answer, and I, I really want to note for our listeners, too, that you've made the distinction between masculine and feminine energies, not necessarily being male or female, but how exactly. we view ourselves and come at life, and I think that's a very important distinction. Yes, it's super, super important. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And You, you know, to, to recognize the energy that another person is in as well as ourselves when we interact with them. I have many women friends who are in a lot of masculine energy, and many male friends who are in a lot of feminine how do we how do we do that dance how do we be aware of that <laughs> uh, except to be aware to be in the now and so talking with you as we did a couple of weeks ago you've had a very interesting career path so far and you had told me that for some time you had worked in what has long been considered a male dominated field now I get this because I've done a lot of work as a symphonic orchestra conductor which for a long time <laughs> was male dominated so I, I dominated so I get that so I'd like to ask you to share with our listeners what field you were in, first of all, and how was it for you to work in that environment? Yes, a good chunk of my life um, has been spent in the realm of hospitality, um, which I wouldn't say is necessarily a male-dominated industry. I myself just was surrounded by a lot of men um, not necessarily masculine energies, but just a lot of men. Um, uh -huh. And I always felt comfortable in the in the presence of of men. There was just something about their simplicity, just the way that they lived life that worked for me. I found women, not necessarily feminine energy, but women, um, to be a little bit more challenging. I had a, I always struggled connecting with women, and maybe it was because I never really had a healthy example of. Um, true, healthy, feminine energy. And so I think I just always gravitated towards industries um, that were male-dominated, where I could be around um, a lot of masculine energy because that's where I felt most comfortable. So um, in hospitality, I would spend a lot of time with my male counterparts and, um, you know, bartending and it's kind of a natural Thing, but most of our clientele in the bar were always men. And then I kind of moved into when I was in college, I, you know, I was that rabble rouser that we talked about. Um, I feel like I came out of the womb, um, basically being somewhat of like a giant agitator, you know, like that thing in the laundry that, that shakes all the laundry around to, you know, <laughs> clean everything so you don't end up with dirty underwear by the, by the time the laundry is done, right? It just, it, like I said, you just end up with dirty drawers, right? So I have always been a little bit of, of an agitator. And when I was in college, I, you know, I just I did a lot of interesting things. I had a very, very successful business selling drugs. Um, and I don't really talk about that too much, mostly because I just keep that for valued listeners. <laughs> but that mm -hmm. was a very, very male-dominated um, world that I was in, um, a scary one at times, um, a really beautiful one at times. I feel lucky that I came out of that experience unscathed. Um, and I think that because I was able to tap into um, my inner feminine, I think that was the thing that really um, helped me prevail in that industry of, of selling drugs. <laughs> um, wow. That's like a whole other podcast that we'd have to talk about. But um, from then I moved into, um, I was working with uh, a partner of mine who raced motocross professionally. She was an incredible 
nine-time women's New Zealand motocross champion. Um, she just wow. was a dominating, dominating force in the motocross world. And um, I spent about four years of my life with her and working with her through her racing career. And um, I spent a lot of time in the pits um, at races and just in that world of male-dominated motocross, racing, very, very masculine. And then from there, I moved on. She actually broke her neck and her back racing, and so she retired. And um, I kind of migrated from that industry into um, the professional cycling world. And I worked for U.S. Paralympic Cycling, BMC's mountain bike team as a mechanic. And then I opened up a nonprofit bicycle recyclery shop, um, which was also extremely male dominated. We set up a kind of a youth workforce program, um, and it was so hard to get girls to be a part of the program. And when we did get them in, it was like, ah, oh, you know, like thank God we finally got some girls. And and it was um, it was very challenging to keep them because uh, they struggled finding their place. Um, in the world of bicycles. But that was, you know, essentially, long story longer, my trajectory was just, I have just always been in um, a world where when I show up to work, I'm mostly surrounded by men. And yeah, I was just, it's been an interesting journey because over the past few years, I have spent most of my, probably about the past five years, spent most of my time with women. Um, and it's very interesting because I'm with a lot of women who are, you know, in the physical form, they are women, but they are um, having a lot of experiences of being in their masculine energy. And um, they're kind of in that place where they're learning how to tap in a little deeper into their feminine energy because they're realizing that that being in all that masculine energy has um, become pretty tiring for them. So it's been quite an interesting shift over the past five years. <laughs> you have lived so much life so far, Kimmy. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine what the next 70 years is going to be like? Oh, who knows? I'm saying, think, how old am I? What's going to happen? How, how much longer I do I have? Maybe say, 60 years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could get 60 years out of myself, but... <laughs> You have crammed a lot in so far, and congratulations on I that. Have, you, are just, you are just plowing through life with, with such a wonderful <laughs> force. So, so then how was it for you as a woman to be working in a lot of that masculine energy? I mean, do I, do I read you right when I hear you say that it was very comfortable for you? It was. I loved it. Yeah. I it was yeah. so comfortable. and. I think there was always, I think ever since I was little, I think I understood the necessity between the balance of masculine and feminine energy. I think on a subconscious level, I always understood it. And now as I'm getting into an adult and studying this, I don't, I don't want to call it work, but just studying this idea of masculine and feminine energy, um, I've started to have a lot of awareness of like, wow, I think that I just always lived in balance. And that's that's what helped me to create a really incredible life. And I can look back to the times when I was really out of balance and I can go, oh, that's why I created that experience I was in. That was pretty unhealthy and, you know, and vice versa. And, and so then when I started to study this, I was like, wow, I've kind of always been doing this, but now I have this, you know, more of a scientific way of looking at it, for lack of a better word. You've done your experimentation. You probably did not realize yeah. it at the time, but you've done your experimentation. And I exactly. know this is something that you are, you are absolutely passionate about this. And, uh, and it's obvious yeah. to me, and I'm <laughs> sure to our listeners, that you are living this. You're not just talking about it. You're actually living this. So you had mentioned to me when we chatted two weeks ago that you had for a long time believed that we were indeed as a set of human beings on the planet closing the gap between masculine and feminine energies and of course that seemed to be your experience in your own world but you told me that when the me too movement came crashing into our awareness a couple of years ago you realized that we might not be as far along as you and i must confess quite frankly i had hoped for so this whole me too movement thing me too movement thing i see i can't even say it right um, because I find it, I found it so, uh, personally found it so upsetting 
Um, yeah. How did this personally affect you, Kimmy? Well, I think I experienced a level of disappointment um, in men and in the inner masculine and with women. I was, um, I think I had just kind of, you know, maybe it was ignorance, but I felt like I had kind of gone through life thinking that, well, everybody just does it this way and we are kind of in balance and, you know, like those people out there are out of balance, but they're not in my inner circle and they're not in my inner world because um, they're out there. You know, they're Hollywood. They don't really exist or, you know, they're like fake people. Um, but then I recognized it um, on a really close level with people that I actually knew and, and men that I knew. And, um, and I think I just really had to step back and allow myself to be a little disappointed and, um, and how things unfolded. And then I kind of stopped and said, well, I guess, I guess we needed this, this shake up, this awakening. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I'm an agitator and I think that what's going on and a lot of these women who have been affected and men who have caused the whole shit storm of troubles are just different forms of agitators themselves. And so I started to kind of give a little grace and gratitude to the situation as well and just say, you know what, hurt people hurt people and we're all just trying to survive our traumas that we had as children and in past lives and whatever it may be and and just to kind of take a step back and and look at the situation for for what it is and you know I think we just we kind of we got away from knowing what the true value of each of our energies is and the opposite sex you know for us will always be quote-unquote the other person um, as long as the masculine is in an unbalanced state. And it's our job as feminines to help the masculine stay balanced and vice versa. They, they also need to help us. And when the masculine is, you know, out of balance, us as feminines, we, we just can't shine. It just doesn't, it, it just can't happen. And it doesn't happen because the feminine energy is weak, but because it, it just, like the greatness just can't arise through resistance and battle and fighting. That's just not how the feminine energy will come to shine. It just, it has to have a supportive environment in, in, in order to, you know, come to life and be its fullest self. And same with the masculine. And that's our, that's our role and that's what we need to give to one another is to be the best versions of ourselves um, to support one another. And one of yes. the things, something that I read recently, and this, I have this incredible book that I love that I've only gotten through for the first 45 pages of it, but I've reread those first 45 pages at least three times. And one of the things that she talked about was, um, and I'm, I'm actually just, I'm going to see if I can find it and read it because it felt so important to me that I just, like, I don't want to butcher it in terms of mm-hmm. its mm-hmm. necessity of healing it and I'm going to have to find it. But one of the things that she talked about was essentially that I can't find it in my book, but I'm going to just try and so there's this there was this interview that was done with a shaman um, in Montana, and one of the things that the shaman said was that the woman the feminine's job is to tell the masculine when to stop, and she said that the men will hunt until there is no animal left and they will cut down all of the trees until there is no trees left in the forest and it's our job as feminines to tell them when to stop and and that's what i think has not happened you know we have not allowed ourselves to say hey masculine hello we're here we need you guys to slow your roll a little bit we need you to you know tap into your inner feminine slow down stop chopping down all the trees, stop killing all the animals, let's just take a break from all of this. And I think that's where we have let the masculine down and we have let ourselves down as feminines by not standing in our power. Does that make any sense? (laughs) Absolutely makes sense. What a great way of looking at this to me totally I totally resonate with that as as a woman as a and in my feminine energy at this moment totally resonated and I think that I think that our men are expecting slash waiting for us to do this and that leads me right into this next question so then Kimmy is it just a matter of us women standing up for ourselves in new ways and requiring 
quote unquote equality or is there another way to go about inviting and creating balance and mutual respect between masculine and feminine slash men and women? Yes. Yeah, I've I've never been a big fan of the word equality. And I'll I'll say it like this because I always look to nature for everything, to give me answers for everything. And if you look at the trees in nature, right, nature doesn't the, – the tree next to the other tree doesn't look at the other tree and go, wow, you're growing a little taller than me. We need to be equal. You know, you're getting a little – you're a little short. I'm a little – like they, there's no competition between the two, right? They just right. grow at the – it's just, it's just like whole life is their goal. They're just going to grow as freaking big and tall as they can until somebody comes and prunes them, right? They're, they just – so how I look right. at it is – we look at ourselves like we are a nature's being, which we are. There's nothing about us that is equal, right? We will never be equal to a man, and why on earth would we want to be? I mean, granted, we both have nipples, and we both, you know, breathe the same air, and we both have blood, and, yeah, so we have some similarities, of course. But to me, there's, there's, there's not a lot of things that we need to be equal about, and I think that the whole equality thing has been really detrimental to us because – we're not honoring our uniqueness or our diversity. We're trying to be equal. And I feel like that's such a shame to not say, I am myself, I am unique, I am a beautiful, incredible individual, I am a feminine, I'm a woman, and you are a man, and you are your own unique, beautiful being as you are. Please don't try and be like me. I'm not going to try and be like you because that's not how we got to, we have to have that polarity you know we have to have that a little bit of resistance and that passion and that fire and that separation otherwise we're just one and that's not really sexy right and so if you think about it in terms of you know the men and the masculine and feminine need to be able to come together right but in order for them to come together they there has to be some separation in order for the polarity to draw the two together so you know it, and I, I feel like the big part of what's happening, too, in our society with this whole equality thing is, you know, you just, I'm just trying to think of, like, how to word it, but, like, we need to honor each other for, for what we are and stop trying to be the same. And women, you know, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of instances where, it, where it's in your working life or your life at home where you you probably should, as a woman, make more money than your counterpart as a man. And there might be instances where a man should make more money than a woman. And, you know, I don't feel like money needs to be our qualifier of things, but, you know, men do certain things on a different level than women, and women do a lot of things differently on a, a different level than men. And that's what needs to be honored versus saying, well, I do this exact same job as this man. Why do I make different money? well, maybe you should make more money. Maybe he should make less and maybe he should make more. And so just allowing things to be what they are versus this whole comparison thing, you know, that's that's like the law, universal law of relativity is everything, things only have value once you compare them to something else, right? Everything is just, is just is until you compare it. And so we, you know, we give our power away when we start saying, well, I'm comparing myself to this guy instead of I'm comparing myself to my best version of me and this is how much money I want to make in this job and this is the role and these are the unique skill sets that I'm going to bring because I'm uniquely me. Who cares about this dude that, you know, has the same job as you? Let him do his own thing. You know what I mean? And so I would prefer us to stop saying equality and start saying uniqueness. You know, I'm just going to be my best unique version of myself and I'm going to work in conjunction with the masculine and we're just going to do this like happy salsa dance together so we can freaking exist on this planet you know (laughs) absolutely and I think this is where we are able to get away from the vitriol and the need to fight what we thought existed that goes back to the question is it still a man's world and I had one guest say well was it ever so we're, we're really bringing full circle to saying let's honor ourselves and, and I'll share very briefly that when I first began my professional conducting career I was going into a place where the orchestras were used to having a man on the podium and I had a choice of showing up in a you know, pair of trousers and then demonstrating <laughs> all sorts of masculine energy uh, or showing up as an integrated 
being. When I needed to be in feminine nurturing power, I was there. When I needed to be in driving power to push something through, I was there. And so I decided that I would neither be I would be neither overly masculine or overly feminine. I, I would be just be right there in the in the balance in the middle doing what needed to be done in the moment, bringing forth the energies that needed to be brought forth to serve the purpose. And that is uniquely Deidre and you are uniquely yeah. Kimmy and, and <laughs> each one of our listeners is uniquely themselves. I think it's a brilliant answer and it's about freedom and power rather than trying to fix what was broken um, and get into all of that negative vitriolic energy. I think the more we stand up as, as beings and say, I am uniquely me, this is where the healing and where the transformation is. So I'm right there with you on that, Kimmy. What do you envision for our future as men and women gracefully coexisting and what's the one piece of advice you can give our listeners to take away from our conversation today that can facilitate that graceful coexistence? Mm. Well, I think the biggest um, takeaway is that we really need to remove the shame and guilt that we put on the masculine and feminine. Um, shaming wow. one another to me has um, it's just caused so much resistance in our society and as humans together. Um, I feel like it's as simple sometimes as maybe like no more fear-based sex education. Like what if we taught sex education from a very young age and we talked about it in a way that it was where it was loving and passionate and fun and, you know, you're, you're talking to four- and five-year-olds and you're teaching them about what it's like to hold – someone's hand or to express love in a healthy way and we need to teach better healthy boundaries and consent and open communication and I think the big piece about that too is we all have deep desires and some of them are crunchy and some of them are a little risque and some of them are kind of kinky and then some of them are very normal quote unquote And I believe that we have to really create a safe space for all of that expression to come out because it's going to come out in some way. And if it's suppressed, it's going to come out in an unhealthy way, like what we are seeing in our current social environment. That's just the masculine's suppressed side coming out. And we have never given it a safe space to to be because we're scared of it, because we're always scared of things that we don't understand. And so we don't take time to understand people's desires. So I think that's part of it. And I think a lot of it too is going to start with us ending the era of these like false dichotomies, like uh, spirituality versus science or technology versus the environment, um, Western medicine versus alternative medicine. Um, and, And we have to realize that we need to honor both sides and kind of soften the boundaries of them a little bit. And, I mean, I just envision this world where, you know, we have all this brilliant, beautiful technology. And what if we put that to use to help our environment instead of to damage it? What if Mm. we have beautiful scientific, you know, endeavors that we have spent years in the making? And, And sometimes all it might need is this little sprinkle of alternative medicine to allow this, crazy scientific, you know, assignment to come to life. But we, but we're so, you know, well, that's over there and this is over here. And what if it was just softened and it came together and and kind of co-created in this really beautiful space together? To me, that that's when I feel like we're really going to flourish as a society. And I just, I'm super excited for when that day comes, and I think we are right on the verge and right on the cusp of it, and I can tell you I'm not going to sit back and relax and wait until it happens. I'm definitely going to do my part um, as I channel my inner masculine to make that happen, but I will also channel my inner feminine and allow myself to relax and sit back and watch some things unfold as well after I've, you know, done my doing, and and then I will start the, the train all over again, so... That's how I perceive it. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful. Right there with you. I think we all want the same thing. We really do. And I think we're all of us uh, asking ourselves what we can do to facilitate and promote this and support it in our own lives 
and what we can do as we give out ourselves as well, give out of our, you know, give our energy out to the world. Kimmy, what a wonderful, uh, wonderful, beautiful answer and a beautiful vision that you have uh, for the future. And I so appreciate you taking your time out of your schedule today to have this conversation with me. It has just been a total delight to share this time. And I found it inspirational. I've had a big smile on my face. And I hope that our listeners do too. Kimmy Ward, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And to our listeners, we've been talking with Kimmy Ward. Do check out her website at bigmissionstudios.com. And I think that this has been fabulous. I hope it's fabulous for our listeners. And I bid everyone a farewell. And again, thank you so much, Kimmy. Bye-bye for now. You're welcome. Bye. Views and opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the show and host. This podcast and its content are not intended to diagnose or treat any medical or mental condition or substitute for proper professional care in this regard. You've been listening to the Deidre Regal Hope and Healing Radio Show, where your voice matters. We hope you have enjoyed this podcast and found inspiration for your own life. If you would like to be a guest on this show, please contact us at drhoperadio at gmail.com. That's drhoperadio at gmail.com. I'm Oliver Dill on behalf of all of us here at the Deidre Regal Hope and Healing Radio Show, wishing you a day full of joy and goodness.